Hello, once again, back to Filter Optional. I'm Chico West, and I'm the no filter. And I'm Shannon West, and I'm the filter. Yeah, so we complement each other. Yes. Me being the no filter, and you being the filter. Yes. yes. I, I need her in my life. We're married, and, and she does a good job giving me a filter. Yes. Yeah. And so I, I appreciate that. Last week's episode, if you, if you tuned in, was about marriage. We'll come back to that. But, you know, this week we're excited. Kevin does a great job with our production. Um, you oh, know, thank you, Chico. No problem. You know, this week, uh, this is going to be a two-part series for, uh, for this week and then next week. Uh, we're going to, you know, expand on it. But this week we're going to really talk about ADD, ADHD. Yes. You know, are, are you familiar with that, oh, Shannon? Oh, am I ever. And it, that will go back to the marriage talk, yes. How are you familiar with that? Um, well, I um, diagnosed you with ADD early on in our marriage, and you were having nothing of it. But I was an educator, a teacher, and a tutor, and um, you would have nothing of it. You just were having nothing of it. And I was Until diagnosing when. you with a lot of things. Yes, because you were in graduate school, so I had all kinds of disorders. So when, when I was when I was doing my imbalances. yeah when I was doing my grad work and. Do it, you know, doing, uh, you know, especially when I was doing the uh, DSM-4 at the time and, you know, I would come in and diagnose you. It was a great way. Her friends told me to quit diagnosing them. I was diagnosing them as well. And so when I realized I was married to the trifecta, you know what the trifecta is? I, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever heard this. Yes. The trifecta is alcoholic or addict, ADD. And male. Oh, that is the trifecta. You you were blessed. Yes. You are daily so blessed. My expectations going into marriage were that you would be the vacation planner and you would be the romantic one planning our anniversaries and our Valentine's Day. And my expectations were quickly squashed by the trifecta. But um But you But you, that's okay. I've embraced it. Now I am you've been fired. As the travel agent of the family, you've been fired as the romantic planner. Of the well, family. you you've never done romantic planning. Last week in, I on Valentine's, our anniversary. Uh, on Valentine's, I got you some flowers. I yes, don't you remember a I day early, getting a day anything early from because you. it was like the ADD. It was like it popped into your head, probably. Am I correct? It did on the pop way in. home from work. Yes, and, and I saw a flower like, store, oh and I go, God. boom! Tomorrow, I can get it. There was probably a huge sign that said Valentine's Day tomorrow. You know, and so you you brought them home immediately, like well, that. And that Im that's that that's one of control. the gifts of of. Uh, you didn't give ADD. them to me on Valentine's Day. You gave them to me the day before. Well, not not that much before. It was probably five or six in the evening, so maybe only six hours it was before, the day before. Technically, it was February thirteenth. It was February thirteenth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but the deal is, we're going to talk about ADD for the next um, couple episodes. What what we want to talk about is you you began to you know hear a little interaction from Shannon the filter about um, just the frustrations of dealing with someone that's ADD. You you know you you have dealt with it being an educator, being married to one. You know you see uh, some of those frustrations. Is yes, that correct? That is correct. And um, you know some of it wasn't until you admitted that you had ADD because you were not specifically diagnosed while you were in school and you were in graduate school. I mean, you had made it, you had a college degree, you had made it through graduate school. And, and that's also when I, when I tutored kids with ADD, I would always tell them, you know, you're going to be super successful, you know, if you, you know, channel this. And, um, yeah, but here, here's the deal. I wasn't diagnosed as a, as a kid. You know, the, the deal with ADD is, is uh, if you want to discover if your your loved one, someone in your life or yourself have ADD, uh, ADD is called a developmental disorder because people have it early in life. You know, it's, it's not something that shows up in middle aged. You know, although I wasn't officially diagnosed by a psychiatrist until I was 29, uh, if you have ADD symptoms but never had them as a child, it is likely due to something else, you know, such as depression, you know, chronic stress, hormonal changes, a head injury, or some form of toxic exposure. Hormonal issues. So if, if you're a man, your wife's going through hormonal issues, 
it, it might not be ADD. You know, women just <laughs> have hormonal yeah, issues. Not, well, uh, is, is that fair? No, that <laughs> has nothing to do with ADD, really. I mean, it does. It doesn't. It you doesn't. know, I just had to throw that I out know, there. I know, because you're about to get, you know, on the male, you know, I'm about to get on the male. Okay, but, know, but here's the deal is I had all these, these signs and symptoms as a child, you know, when I spent time, you know, discussing it with, um, you know, with a licensed psychiatrist. Uh, and then also, you know, my boss back in the 90s, she said it too. I didn't listen to you. You were putting books by my bed. Yes. You were doing all sorts of things. You were saying you need to do something. Because I had, a, I had all the classic symptoms, even though I was an adult, you know, and I was in grad school. But my ADD actually worked for me well as an adult in grad school. Yes, but it's because you were a full-time student and you had a job full-time full and time. I had a part-time job. Yes. So you were occupied all day without, you know, it's when you have idle time. I was stimulated nonstop and I was yes. switching. I was driving down to, you know, grad school. Then I was coming back to work and then, you know, three nights a week, two nights a week, I was going and doing, you know, IOP, these outpatient deals. And so I was constantly being stimulated, you know, that that's, you know, that's the deal. And that doesn't always translate um, in a marriage very well because, you know, you would, I have now learned that you just let me know the second that something's on your mind but I am very organized, very calendar driven, very list driven. Oh, I've made jokes. You made lists for lists. Yes. You and know, so it's like very, very would, type A personality. If you would call me early on in marriage and say, hey, let's go to dinner with, you know, the Smiths, um, you know, next month or whatever, I would get it on the calendar and everything. And then I would come back to you and say, okay, we're going to go to dinner with the Smiths, you know, in three weeks or whatever. You'd be like, what? Why? I can't do it that <laughs> night. And I, I'd, you know, I'd scram I would scramble. I would drop everything to do what you said, including this podcast. Yes, <laughs> including the podcast. Um, you know, what do you mean by including the podcast? Because you, you had your assistant text me and say, hey, Chico wants to, you know, do two podcasts and do a series and um he wants you to come up with the topic and, and you spent all this so, time and energy yes. and, so i got and she, right on it i mean she had she gave me notes i mean she had yes, that's all my handwriting. this yes. stuff yes. i mean she printed it up so i mean we are we are organized today not um, because of me well yeah but i wanted bullet points but you came in from work yesterday yes and sat down on the couch and said yeah, you know, you know your podcast idea? I don't want to do that. Yeah, that's, that, that's what you said. That didn't go over very you said, well. I don't want to do it. Last night, did it? And you know what I said? I said we're doing it. Yes. But because it was Because I've learned to deal and you and yeah. Yes. And you did. And you did a great job and it, and that's why you're my filter. Yes. You know, and that's why it it doesn't it, it does create some conflict, but it doesn't create conflict where it blows out of proportion. So, I mean, sometimes it you know, you might call these with ADD what happened yesterday between us, like games people play. We don't even realize we're playing the games. You know, yesterday I had some interaction at work and, you know, stuff in the field as it related to Casa Cleaner. And I came up with this idea, even though I loved your idea about these two episodes with ADD. Yes. That all of a sudden, nope, I'm going to change it and I'm going to ad lib and that's, and I'm good at that. And just, you know, come get on my bandwagon. Yes. And it's, that's not healthy. Yeah, I couldn't switch gears after you had had me. And so in a marriage, when you are married to someone that has ADD, they can be super successful and super driven and and helpful. But if you aren't aware of their impulsivity and their change in thought process, then you can build resentment. Oh, fast. Really fast. fast. I mean, I, you know, I was already with your one comment. I was already quite angry yesterday because of the time that I had put in. Well, in some of the games that I would play, and if your kids are playing these games, they, some of it is ADD because a lot of times it's the prefrontal cortex that isn't firing. And so a person with ADD wants that 
you know, firing mechanism. Well, and I do, from our youngest, I, I, I have, since I have gained the tools to deal with you over the years, Yes. I now can handle um, Beck a little bit better because he texts me the second he has a thought about anything. I mean, you, you know that. Um, and if I were to get a text, you know, him saying, I need, a, I need a blue folder. He'll text me things like that. Like, I need a blue folder. And not tell me when or why. It's because his teacher has just told him. So, actually, he should write it down and be responsible for it himself. But that comes into my codependency. If you struggle with codependency, then you're going to get a text saying, I need a blue folder, and I am going to drop everything and go get the blue folder, except I don't do that now. No. Because I am not codependent anymore. I will either text back and you're say. You're not codependent. Really? Uh, well. You still struggle with it. Yes. But you have I'm better saying, boundaries yes. is what I would say. Okay. So I would text him back and say, we will talk about this after school, write it down or something like that. And then I would find out he did, he needed a blue folder for like next year. I mean, or whatever. It just, but it's just that impulsivity and thought. But, um, but part of that so, impulsivity is that that's what stimulates the prefrontal cortex. You know, exactly. is all of a sudden some of the games. I mean, early in our marriage, I I would hide in our house and scare you because oh I got gosh, stimulated. Yes. You know, and and picking fights is one of them. And so, in a, oh, in a marriage that does not work, and then in a parent-child relationship that does not work, when someone is because picking a fight stimulates you and your brain, and so you'll just you will literally pick a fight. Yeah, because then all of a sudden I feel I'm gonna I get, feel tuned in. Yes. Yeah, and so they so understanding some of the games people play. You know what what people with ADD, uh, it, you know we hear this word short attention span. You know, but the the reason there is that short attention span is because all your 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 brain is is constantly moving and observing a lot more things than a lot of people that don't have ADD. Right. You know, so I notice things I can pick up the the distractibility, you know, big time, you know, people with ADD tend to notice more in their environment than others. Right. You know, the keen sense of sensitivity causes them to get easily off task. Right. You know, I, I do that disorganization. I, I, I am, I am disorganized, organized. Yes. You have your systems in the way that your brain operates the best. And that's how I used to tutor kids. When they would come to my house, I would have them come like on a Monday or a Tuesday, ideally, maybe a Wednesday, because they couldn't keep a calendar um, as far as like those spiral bound like that I love. Like, I mean, give me a calendar and I'm so happy. But um, I would just literally get out a piece of paper, a notebook paper and write Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday on it. And we would go over what they needed to do. Now, I would make them have a big monthly calendar so that we could backtrack projects and things like that. But I would say to them, work in your systems. However your brain best remembers, you know, something, then and we don't really need to talk about that. But, but, um, but, but the deal is just to understand that disorganized, organized. You know, here's the deal. It, you know, it drives, it, crazy, it drives a like lot of me. people crazy. And, you know, I have Kay who works with me at Casa. I mean, she's a lot like you. She has her system. She does that. But now she's really, she, I think, probably struggled a little bit working with me. Um, yeah. She would say that, you know, big Which time. Which is why I interview people that work for you. Yes. To help them to understand. To help them understand you. But then once people do understand, I, I want to share is if you are ADD, it's how you understanding you and understanding how your brain works and fires will really help the other person. And then them understanding that as well will really, uh, I think, can bring you a lot of success. Success in, in relationships, success in your business, success in school yes. is finding well, out your... As the person that is not ADD... Um, it's hard to not take your systems and of organization personally. For example, um, as a spouse, um, if you're just thinking about, oh, I'm hungry, and you know, and you text, "What's for dinner?" 
I used to take that personally because I'd be like, I haven't even had a chance to go to the grocery store. I don't know what's for dinner. Can't you handle that? Can't you just do something? But you're just thinking about it or working for you. It's yes. like, um, hey, have you called so-and-so? And and I'll take it personally. Like, no, I haven't had a chance to call so-and-so, but you just thought of it in your head and you just want to get it out. You yeah. just want to make sure it's off your and, plate. And a lot of which times. Which can be selfish too. In but ways. also a lot of times it's... Uh, I, I'm getting it off my plate, but I'm not really being uh, proactive about getting it off my plate. I'm not being uh, sometimes kind. It's just coming out that bleh. Right. And, and the deal is, I, I am a compassionate person, but I'm just no filter. And yes. that and people can take that on. And then yeah. I can take it on as the ADD guy. Then, man, why, you know, why are people taking it so personal? Yes, and I hate your, I don't know if this is a therapist, uh, you know, you know thing or whatever but when you say how come i can't stand those two words just don't ever say them to me how come <laughs> how come you i might ask how come because i'm not asking it how is come so condescending like did you get to the bank today no how, how come? come you know i i'm truly are, you know, just curious are you having trouble with uh, you know um friends this week yeah i'm kind of having some how come or you what's know what's going on what's going do you feel good no, I don't feel very good. How come? Uh, I mean, it is such I, I, an I think annoying that's question. More, I think that's more of a therapist. Because I believe it's a healthy question. Because the why question isn't good. You know, I, you know, getting, okay, what's going on? How come? You know, yeah. help me understand. You know, yeah, well, it's like, I don't want it's, therapy. It, it, so I yeah. don't want therapy from you. But um, I know you don't. I'm okay, not sure so why. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about, um, so I know boys. I know, you know, I'm married to you, so the male ADD, and most of the kids that I tutored um, were boys. and so That I, had ADD. Yes, and so I don't want to put this in a boy category, but, you know, there's all this, um, boys are, we've talked about this before, they're bigger risk takers in general, and when we talked about the difference between men and women and addiction, um, we talked about how women are more, you know, isolated in their addiction and, you know, more at home and men are more out there and risk takers and whatever. And that, that whole, um, I just feel like now there's this whole thing about boys will be boys and, oh, they're ADD and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so I've always said, and I think I've said it before on this podcast, but that boys are boys. We need to quit saying boys will be boys. We need to say boys are boys. And then I'm wondering if there is a... We'll, we'll pause for okay. a second because here's the deal is uh, what we've seen. I mean, you I mean, you have experience. You were the PTA president of the elementary school that right. our kids went to. It's like, you know, teachers, a lot of, a lot of teachers in elementary are women and so the deal is they see these boys that are rambunctious oh they must be add right you know we go to that you know we're we're believers that you know a lot of times i was underdiagnosed when i was a kid now there's been this trend of overdiagnosed and that's just kind of life you well, know right. things things go in those under over under over so and these and it, it's either oh they have add or oh boys will be boys or you know yes. whatever and you and when boys just are man they 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 get restless they, they like to move boys. around they they don't sit there and just color and stuff like that no they want to they want to tear apart stuff right they want to build stuff they want to they want to saw trees we mentioned that right right and so i think that in today's world i hope that we can have a discussion about boys are boys and the things that we can do because i, I think we're going to talk about add and addiction and the correlate is there a correlation between add and addiction but yeah i think that'll be next week's episode okay but so i hope but i hope that we can um figure out how to intervene early on these boys are boys because in today, what I was going to say is in today's world, you know, with, with all the Me Too and the stuff, I mean, it is not boys will be boys when it comes to sexual assault and, um, um, you know, aggression and... Um, yeah, but what we're talking about more is boys that, that don't I'll, even want to hang out with girls when they're when they're eight, seven, nine, ten years old, and they just want to run around 
you know, and build forts and do stuff yes, like that. That's and they're, what I want to you know, talk about. That, yeah. it, I understand. Not when all of a sudden hormones kick in and they're, you know, we, yeah. we're in agreement with that. But what we're talking about is, you know, when, when, when your boys are that way, yes, you need to look for some of these signs of ADD. You know, but they're there. But some of it is just boys will be boys. They're not ADD. They, you know, they had sitting in a classroom in second or third grade for 50 minutes straight. That's a struggle. It is a struggle. Um, it you know, is a and struggle, that does but... not mean you're ADD. Right. You know, so, so you have to have all these characteristics in order to be ADD or ADHD. You know, boys that, you know, like to you know, jump off, you know, the, the shed onto the trampoline. That doesn't mean, you know, something wrong, you know, like, you know, boys, you know, like to play, you know, cowboys and Indians. They like to play with guns, you know, pretend guns. Yes. yes, yes, yes they, yes. they like that. They're interested. Little girls aren't interested in that. Boys aren't interested in dolls. Right. You know, little no. girls are. You right. Know? They're, they, you know, boys will play with girls if they have nothing else to do and, you know, play well, house and yeah, dress up. I mean, I, you know, one Christmas, Travis did get a kitchen, a stroller with a baby doll in it and, um, and something else. Um, yeah, and, he's going to love that being a football since, player in college right now. I know. Here well, and yeah. that hopefully his he's friends a don't hear that. He's sweet, nurturing. He is a sweet, nurturing. Man. He he's is a man. A man. He's almost anyway, 20 okay. years old. That's not what we're talking about. Okay. okay. We're talking about ADD. I'm just saying that. Um, the boys will be boys. Yeah. 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 No, boys are boys. Boys are boys. I like that. You boys, know, boys are boys. And so I, I do think that, um, you know, I don't, I thought, we, I thought we were going to talk about some other things like that, how the brain fires, like literally you did a brain scan on oh, yours. Oh, dude, we should talk about that. And that's where, you know, we, we really want to uh, talk about that in the sense of, you know, I did a brain scan, it's, it, or it's really called a spec scan. Um, and I, w I had uh, a radio acid, acid isotope injected into me and sees where my brain fires, you know. At rest and at... Rest. at activity. Yeah, during activity. And so what what that did is really helped, you know, how my prefrontal cortex and for me also the singular gyrus. The singular gyrus of the brain uh, is the gear shift of the brain. And so the deal is my gear shift of the brain, you know, it would stay stuck in first or second gear. Right. You know, and so understanding, you know, well, that and in time. layman's terms, it um so so Chico went through the entire process because he was working with a doctor that did these scans, and since Chico was a therapist working with kids with ADD, he wanted to show Chico the benefits of this scan so that other people would get it. Um, so he went through the whole process, and I went through it with you, and we sat in on the you meeting You had radio acid, isotope injected into your no, system? No, when we... <laughs> <laughs> no. It's no, you participated in the assessment. In the after, in the assessment, when they gave us the, you know, the findings or whatever. And the findings were, quite frankly, they said that this one part of your brain, the, I guess the prefrontal cortex. And the singular gyrus. They, they would call it hot spots and um, cool spots. And yours was a hot spot at rest and during activity. So yes. it talked about ways to cool that hot spot. And... Um, the, you know, the ways I thought it was very interesting because they talked about the positive and the negative things that cool that hot spot. Okay. Yes. And so he, here's the deal is like, if it, you know, if you think you might have ADD and you have a history when you were a little kid or your kids have ADD is, is, you know, this episode and next week's episode is we want to really help you educate instead of just listening to the doctor, you know, do some research. There's a lot of good books out there. You know, there's a lot of information on, on the web as well. You know, and, you know, that's going to really help. And that's, you know, that's what we're and trying to say. Listen, certainly listen to the doctor. But yes. you're going to need to, if you do not suffer from ADD and that's how your brain works and you marry someone or have a child that does have ADD, then you are going to need tools, both of you. You know, the person with ADD and the person without are going to need tools to have a lifetime 
of freedom. <laughs> yes, because it, it is it is yeah. tough. But I, you know, I so I had that in you know the, my those hot spots that were active both at at activity and inactivity. You know, and just that calming place. You know, you, it it helped uh, it helped conceptualize. Okay, this is how come I do some of those things. It gave you some freedom as well. Is that? fair yes, yes and a lot of people can't afford that i i wouldn't have paid for it i got it for free right because you know you, yeah uh but but the deal is if you if you can and you really want to get a good uh picture you know dr amen out of california he has the amen clinic that's it's really good yes. to get that yes because i find that people including myself i'll just talk about myself i, I find that I have spun my wheels for 23 years with this, having you and then having children and, you know, tra you know, Travis doesn't have ADD and but that's not the way his brain was, works, but his when he was a little boy was so hyperactive. He was more, you know, just active and you're not really H A D H D, but I wanted so bad to put, Travis in the ADHD category because he was so active, but then it turns out that's not how his brain operates. And then Bex doesn't operate the way Travis's does. And so I just, you really can't have this broad umbrella like, oh, they've got ADD, they've got ADHD. I think that- And, and here's the deal, and our boys are prime example is, you know, Travis does not have it, but he was active. He it wasn't hyperactive, but he was, he was always moving. You know, always. He was always moving. And it was like when he was four or five. I mean, my mom called him Dennis the Menace. Yes. You know, and so Dennis. Unless the... he slept. He slept well. Yeah. And then, you know, and then poor, poor Beck had so many intestinal issues before he could, you know, move around and talk um, that his sleep was disrupted from an early age. And you have to take all of those things into account. Yeah, and so we're we're giving yeah. illustrations of our boys and myself. Is you know some of it. It the crazy thing is, if we didn't, if I didn't know about my attention deficit disorder, you know, and I did, I wasn't a therapist. We might have gone the route of doing something with Travis at that early age. Yes, I agree. You know, and I so agree. the deal is we paused. You know, we want to encourage that pausing. Yes. You know, with with families, we want to encourage uh, for you to really think about, OK, what, but you know, it is what's a, going it's on? It's a fragile situation. And so, we'll, you know, next episode next week, we'll talk about kind of how to deal some of the ways to deal with that fragile, you know, um, well, and it's good. It's good to ask people. It's good to find out, you know, the, the deal with ADD, you know, the reason I avoided and it. And doctors are fine. I mean, assessment is great. And oh yes. my gosh, Beck just texted me. That's so funny. Yeah, but that is funny. You with know, his grades. Sweet. Because <laughs> yeah. I told him yeah. to get them up before Friday. Yeah. Okay. So uh, That was a little ADD moment, but that you're was. not I ADD know. at all. I know. You know, that's just impulsivity. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just wanted to That's point one out. of the characteristics. Okay. But with ADD, it's like we we've had this mindset uh I I don't know if it's a mindset globally or, you know, nationally, but I I did feel this sense of oh, if I'm ADD, then I'm the messages in my head. That, you know, the ants. The, that's one of the things yes. is automatic negative thoughts. You know, automatic oh, negative I thoughts. I would I would yes. not, you know, I I'm not smart enough or I'm not good enough or you know, all those old messages because of the way I, I organized, I disorganized, organized, yes. you know, that I was, I had a short attention span and then unless you, I like something. If I like yes, something, I am hyper focused, right? Yeah. which causes problems socially in a marriage because if I am an extrovert, okay, you are too. You like to say you're an extroverted introvert or whatever no, I'm you an are, introvert. or you're introvert now. I'm introvert. That's such crap. But, um, I disagree. We'll about, I thought I was the no filter. You're like, we're going to have to put a filter on no, you. No, no, because you are an extrovert. I mean, I'm pretty sure if I could get an amen from everybody out there. I, I don't, I don't. Okay. I, okay. Listen. I, I would have said extrovert. <laughs> okay. So listen. So I'm an listen, extrovert. Linda. Yeah. Listen, listen Linda. Linda. So I like to go to, you know, parties or whatever. I mean, I don't as much anymore 
because I'm old and I don't like to get dressed. But um, so, but you early on in marriage, you'd be like, eh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that. And I, I didn't want to be the person that went by myself. But you, I had to. Okay, so get what is this? To, uh, well, I mean, you're. We it's just. Talking. It was just Sorry. a little random. No, but here, here's the deal. We, uh, we with ADD and or ADHD is understanding. Uh, you know, the person also the deal is ask for those at, you know, ask others, you know, and don't automatically, you know, just like the ants, I got to kill the ants, automatic negative thoughts. Don't automatically assume if, if your son, you know, is, is very active, uh, and can't sit still that he has ADD. He might not have ADD. He might right. not be stimulated. He might, he might be very intelligent, you know, stuff like that. Also don't automatically automatically go oh we need medication so next week's episode we're going to talk about medication we're going to talk about um you know drugs and and alcohol and what that does to the brain with add you know what else are we going to talk about next week shannon i don't know uh you you wrote some notes i got them here i know I mean, chico but uh you know how the brain fires you know you know which comes first predisposition you know to add i mean we're going to talk about quite a few things you know, but we're excited and thank you yep. so much for tuning in. Yes, you know? thank you so much. For yes, Ni nice, nice dialogue. Good ADD episode where you're It was. Like, yeah, you were a little more than me. No. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>